Hello and welcome to another Paratus video. My name is Gideon and the topic of today's discussion is the building blocks and foundation of effective personal defense, self-defense, whatever you want to call it. Comes at a bit of an opportune time. Most of you are aware of yesterday's news event where a member of a congregation in Pretoria was involved in a defensive shooting incident against three armed perpetrators. Now, they uh, attacked the congregation Armed member of said congregation became involved in a confrontation with these three per armed perpetrators, shootout ensured, two of them were dead on scene, third ran away, congregation unscathed, that's a win, that is a supremely good defensive shooting incident. So building from that, you may have noticed that if you're a regular reader of Paratus's Facebook posts or website, a regular watcher of our videos, we talk about several things often, and the one is that you are always the first responder to your personal crime scene. We can shorten that to saying you are always your first responder. Prepare yourself appropriately. Now, you might not intuitively know what that means, so I'll unpack it a little bit for you. Essentially, what we're saying is if you are confronted by a violent criminal who seeks to do your harm, be it a murderer, rapist, armed robber, whomever, the first person on that scene is you. You are the first person capable of responding to that aggression directed at yourself or at somebody you're responsible for or who you're with. So you are the first responder, not the police, not the security company, not the, uh, not the ambulance crew. You are. They all arrive there after you. And the way that you conduct yourself, your actions and your abilities can ultimately determine the outcome of that violent confrontation and of that event, whether or not you are going to win and be victorious or whether or not you're going to be a victim. And what forms part of this thinking as well is there are three kind of fundamental building blocks to this process or three pillars. And we shorten it. That's something I really should put in a t-shirt by saying mindset leads, training feeds, equipment or brands follow. And we're going to unpack these three topics quite quickly. It's a rather condensed video. We'll give them each more attention in time, but this is to give you a broad overview of how, you know, personal defense works and how you should wire yourself or what you should focus on to be more effective at it or equip yourself appropriately. Now, talking about mindset, okay, what is mindset? Mindset, in short, is your attitude towards the things that you're experiencing or to the events that you are exposed to or that you're subjected to. Mindset is attitude. Now, you can walk around without any weapons on you and still be armed because what happens up here, you are the weapon. Your mind is the weapon. You are armed already because of your mind set. Okay. Being armed is a mindset. The gun is just a tool. You don't need a gun to be armed but the equipment makes a big difference and we'll get to that in a minute, okay? There are several ways in which your mindset can, or rather that your mindset might build this train track on which your, your train, or rather it builds the track on which the train of your response to a violent encounter is gonna run. On the one hand, you might be stuck in the loop of denial and submission. As in, oh goodness, this this can't be happening to me. I can't believe this is actually it. Oh dear, oh dear. Or, oh God, I hope they don't hurt me. If I give them everything they want, maybe they'll leave me alone. That's the one side to it. The other, the other potential mindset is one of appropriate aggression. And we'll unpack why we're calling it appropriate in a minute. Appropriate aggression would be, how dare this fucker try and rob me, murder me, or rape me now? How dare they violate my bodily integrity? How dare they violate my right to life? How dare they attack me? I'm going to fuck them up for trying to kill me. That's an appropriately aggressive response when you're confronted with an armed criminal or a violent criminal trying to kill you or rape you or murder you. Okay, We say appropriate because that, that's a switch in your head. You cannot walk around aggressive, full aggro, all day, every day. That's just, you know, that's not an appropriate response in traffic. That's not an appropriate response to some sort of confrontation at work about a project or an argument at work. It's not appropriate response if you're annoyed in a queue at the shopping mall. It's not an appropriate response to some sort of social argument or social confrontation. Obviously, that level of aggression is only appropriate under very narrow circumstances. The, what it does mean is just because it's not appropriate 90% of the time or even 99% of the time doesn't mean it's something that you shouldn't have the capacity to 
switch on or to fall back on or to indulge in because when it is appropriate boy is it appropriate now a lot of people make misconceptions about mindset they think okay to be a farm owner or to be defensively trained you're going to need to you know be trained to kill and you need to think about the fact that you might use your weapon to kill as you go about your daily basis that's just psychotic folks like i don't think that way in the morning when i you know strap my gun to me okay i've never thought that way i certainly don't think that way when i do training because guess what we're not training people to kill we're training people to be defenders we're training them defensively so that they can within the boundaries of the law which are quite wide might i add effectively defend themselves against violent aggressors who seek to do them harm that's it okay we're not no one's going to teach you to be a killer no one's going to teach you to be some sort of like preemptive strike ninja and door kicker that's not the point that is completely outside the context of of the vast majority of people who really just want to get on with their lives and be left alone and that's exactly what this kind of is feeding into in the sense that you want to have a mindset where you are appropriately aggressive when you are confronted you need to be prepared to win guys and girls that's really what it is you need to be prepared to win so that you can be the victor not the victim the mindset of oh god just give them what they want and they'll leave me alone is very optimistic there are cemeteries full of optimistic people who firmly believe that if they just gave the attacker what they want they would be left alone and nothing further bad would happen to them they wouldn't you know they wouldn't squeeze the trigger on the gun that's already pointed at their head the problem with this is criminals are, uh, operate outside the boundaries of the law they operate outside the boundaries of common decency you are quite literally trusting your life to someone who's a criminal scumbag at the same time very reasonable and rational people struggle to entrust their lives to trained highly competent highly acclaimed surgeons for surgical procedures in a controlled environment yet they are happy to entrust their lives to the whims of criminals that's not a winning mindset folks that is not going to assist you in surviving an encounter and ultimately i know we want to survive an encounter but to survive the encounter you need to win you need to have a mindset of winning not a mindset of submission so mindset leads mindset is highly important i've seen people achieve a hell of a lot just with mindset and some rudimentary equipment obviously if the encounters had gone down slightly differently it may not have ended as well for them but mindset is so important that even with inferior equipment and zero training you are still more effective by a long shot than someone with awesome equipment and awesome training but zero mindset okay mindset is what enables you to behave appropriately in a violent confrontation it enables you to defend yourself it enables you to defend your wife and child or your husband in many cases or other people you care about when violent bad people come knocking that's how important mindset is without mindset everything else falls apart before you've even left the starting blocks that's why we say mindset leads next up is training training feeds why do we say training feeds training is nothing other than the knowledge and skills okay attitude leads in mindset knowledge and skills feeds into that in making you more effective at achieving that which your mindset is leading you to attempt to achieve in this case defense okay effective personal defense and training goes far beyond the gun now before we get stuck into training too much we need to realize that any skill is perishable or the vast majority of skills are perishable if you do not do recurrent training if you do not practice regularly if you do not oil this machine of skills regularly it's going to degenerate and not be remotely as effective as you would like it to be right and in a violent encounter people have strange ideas they think that you would rise to the occasion when you're encountered you know when you encounter bad and violent people trying to kill you that's not how it works you don't rise to the occasion you don't rise to the fight you degenerate or devolve or descend to your level of training so if your level of training is poor and like low level and down there you're not going to operate up here you're going to operate down there because when you are <laughs> subjected to a violent encounter 
All sorts of interesting physiological and psychological things happen to you. You're going to get a massive adrenaline dump. You're going to have auditory exclusion. You're going to have some sort of tunnel vision. You're not going to be able to think remotely cognitively as well as you would when you're calm. Um, You're not going to be able to concentrate as well. Your fine motor skills go out the bloody window. The only safety net you have to operate effectively is your training is the fact that you've been trained to do these things. Training is of fundamental importance and it goes beyond the gun. And I've made a list of stuff, right? Stuff that's important to be effective at defense is you need to be able to fight effectively. We're talking here about basic combatives, basic weapon retention skills. These aren't rocket science. These aren't things that you need to commit to a lifelong of a martial arts study at a dojo. These are things that you can be taught quickly and that you can maintain with without over having to overexert yourself to a rigorous training program all the time. The more you train, the more you practice, the better, but still basic combatives, basic weapon retention skills, situational awareness, something that people also do need to be trained, how to be situationally aware. It's something that you need to train. It's something that you need to practice daily. Hugely important situational awareness, stress inoculation, anything that you can do that puts you in a controlled environment under a lot of stress and requires you to solve fairly complex tasks, even rudimentary ones, is a form of stress inoculation that is beneficial to you when bad things go down, whether or not it's a car crash, a house fire, or a violent encounter, stress inoculation has huge amounts of value. Physical fitness. So many people want to be high-speed, low-drag gun operators. Okay, they don't know how to fight and even worse, they're not physically fit. They're physically very unfit. There's no point in surviving a violent encounter. Have a piece of plaque dislodge in your auto, shoot through your heart and give you cardiac arrest 30 minutes after the fact. Okay, wow, you've won the gunfight. Well done. Now you've now you've died from a heart attack. Physical fitness feeds into everything else. It makes it easier for you to perform these defensive tasks because you're fitter. Your body is geared to be able to physically do this. Now, again, you don't have to be a long distance marathon athlete. You do not have to be, uh, you know, a dev crew operator or a recce or special task force level of fitness. Um, you must just have a reasonable level of functional fitness and functional strength. This is not unattainable. Most people can easily do this. Many people already, to a degree, try or have a program geared to achieving that. Knowledge of the law, another thing, very important. Knowledge of the law gives you confidence. As training in other aspects give you confidence in your action, knowledge of the law will give you confidence in your action. When you know that you are behaving appropriately, you have confidence in that you're not going to be hamstrung. Criminals aren't hamstrung by worries about the law. They're already breaking the law. They don't have to hold back. You need to understand that when the violent encounter ticks the boxes for you to justifiably use lethal force, you need to use it. You can't hesitate because then you're probably going to be dead. Lastly, medical trauma, first aid, stop the bleed, knowledge, highly important, not just for fighting, but other aspects of life, but it feeds in. Those are the training aspect that goes beyond guns. The gun skills you need, okay, it's stuff like fundamentals of speed, accuracy, malfunction clearing. Okay, those are the basics of that. Then defensive shooting skills, how to shoot, how to move, how to use cover, how to use concealment, how to fight, um, and you get, sorry, intermediate and more advanced weapon skills, fighting in around vehicles, fighting in around buildings, fighting injured. Um, that's gun related, fighting related skills. That's that type of training. Then you're talking about um, training with other types of tools, training with OC spray, t- training with knives, training with impact weapons, training with improvised weapons. Okay, mindset leads, training feeds then we get to equipment. So training is going to give you knowledge and skills to supplement your attitude and it's going to give you the confidence of action when you need it most. Right, moving on to the last one and the thing that people care the most about in South Africa, tools. Why? Because we're tactical magpies. We like to see shiny stuff that's, uh, you know, whether it's an Aero 15 or whether it's a plate carrier or whether it's, you know, combat boots or whether it's Uh, this or that shiny knife, we are attracted to shiny consumer products. It's just one of the ways it is. We'd rather spend 10,000 Rand on a shiny optic we don't really need than 1,000 Rand on a fundamentals course that we really do need because we can't shoot for shit. Um, But equipment also has important points to it. Okay. 
When we're talking about choosing defensive equipment, whether it's a handgun or whether it's anything else, it needs to be reliable. It needs to be well supported in South Africa. It needs to be ergonomic to your lifestyle. It needs to be trainable. And when we talk about guns, it needs to be in a common caliber. Okay, Common calibers are cheaper. Why is cheap important? Because you're going to need to train this gun. And training this gun involves shooting it at a shooting range, doing drills, courses of fire, competitions, whatever it is that you need to do to make to achieve and maintain defensive proficiency with your weapons okay so equipment has fundamentals to choosing it i've linked several articles in the description below that takes you through your everyday carry journey i don't want to spend too much time unpacking it on video because equipment's a long discussion on its own but tying these three three things together like i said i've seen people achieve a hell of a lot with incredibly good mindset zero training and inferior equipment now, you don't want to be that guy just because some people have managed to achieve it. There's other people that have come horribly short because of the same issues. If you have the mindset, if you don't have the mindset, you can cultivate it. And it's very important for you to begin cultivating it. And a way to cultivate mindset is through training. If you already deem your life as something worth defending, if you deem your bodily integrity as something worth defending, if you deem the lives of your loved ones as something worth defending, then you're already on the right track to cultivating a mindset that you need. Training will feed into cultivating that mindset. So go find training. The equipment is important, yes. Equipment follows on this. There's no reason why you can't start your equipment and licensing journey uh, and while you wait for that to complete its administrative process, keep training already so that you are ahead of the curve by the time you get your license and you can start training more seriously with your own weapons. There are so many ways around this. There are so many good instructors in this country that will help you cultivate a defensive mindset, that will help you cultivate the skills and knowledge that you need to defend yourself effectively. And that's basically where I want to leave this journey for today is go out there, explore. Don't shortchange yourself. Don't be a tactical magpie. Spend money on training, spend time on training, spend time on acquiring knowledge. Spread this video to people who are unsure about how to start this video. Send them our way and we'll do our level best to help them. In the meantime, if you like what Paradis does, hopefully soon you'll be able to buy one of these really cool caps and one of our cool hoodies on our online e-store, uh, which is going to go live this week. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the developer is doing good work on it. So just keep an eye on this. They're going to retail about 210 to 220. Um, and it's a limited run because uh, the input prices are going up for the next runs. And I'll do my best to keep the prices low. But the first batch of 100, um, they're going to be a reasonable 210 to 220. Okay, nice high quality cap. Also, if you uh, want to buy good quality coffee and support us, Buritrius, they're in the link below. And in the credit second, the section, the Zapper and Snapscan, uh, if you want to buy us Whiskey for Whiskey Friday. You've been awesome. Stay frosty. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments. I will try to get to them. Thank you for being a cool audience. Stay safe. Stay defensive. Go get training. Go get equipment. And remember, your mind is the weapon. You are the weapon. The gun is just a tool. Take care. Bye-bye.